British Capture of Tobruk The British capture of Tobruk was a battle fought between 21 and 22 January 1941 as part of Operation Compass, the first offensive of the Western Desert Force WDF in the Western Desert Campaign of the Second World War. After defeating the Italians in the Battle of Bardia 3-5 January 1941, the 6th Australian Division and the 7th Armoured Division pressed on and made contact with the Italian garrison in Tobruk on 6 January. The Italians had fortified Tobruk, their only naval base in eastern Cyrenaica. Before the war but after being routed at the attack on Nibua, the Battle of City Barone, and the Battle of Bardia the Italian 10th Army had lost eight of its nine divisions, and had only the 61st Infantry Division Cert and stragglers to defend the port. The Tobruk garrison suffered 2048 casualties, and 20,000 men were taken prisoner for 400 Australian and British casualties. The WDF continued its westwards advance towards Derna and Mechili. Background Operation Compass in September 1940, the Italian invasion of Egypt had begun, but stopped after 62 my 100 km at City Barony, where the Italians dug in. At first the British prepared to resist an Italian advance on Mersa Matra, but when this did not occur, a raid by the Western Desert Force, with the possibility of exploiting success, was planned on the Italian positions around City Barony. The raid, Operation Compass, began on 9 December 1940, with the surprise attack on Nibua where the Italian brigade-sized Malady Group, the only Italian armored formation in Egypt, was annihilated. On 10 December the Western Desert Force engaged the three divisions of the Italian Libyan Division's group and the 64th Infantry Division Catanzaro at the Battle of City Barony and defeated them by 11 December. With the 63rd Infantry Division Siren, the last Italian division on Egyptian soil, Retreating towards Libya, the 7th Armored Division pressed on and by 15 December had cut the road between Bardia and Tabra. At Bardia the Italians had concentrated the Roman 23 Corps General Annabel, Bergonzali comprising the 1st Blackshirt Division 23 Marzo, 2nd Blackshirt Division 28 Atabur, 62nd Infantry Division Marmarica, and the 63rd Infantry Division Siren. Further units were four light tank battalions, remnants of the Catanzaro Division, and the Roman 21 Corps Artillery Regiment. After careful preparation, the British attacked and defeated the Italian defenders from 3 to 5 January 1941. On the morning of 5 January, while Australian forces were still mopping up the southern cauldron at Bardio, Wavell ordered the 7th Armoured Brigade of the 7th Armoured Division to advance west, past Tarbrook and cut it off. By 6 January the brigade had reached Elodem, now Tarbrook Airport. By 7 January the bulk of the British forces had arrived and cut off Tarbrook. The 19th Australian Brigade Group placed itself opposite the eastern defences of Tarbrook and the 16th Australian Brigade Group took over on the western side. The 4th Armoured Brigade moved to the west of the city the 7th Support Group blocked the western exits, and the 7th Armoured Brigade screened the force from interference from the west. Prelude Italian Preparations After the encirclement of Tabruk, Graziani informed Mussolini that this morning the investment of the position by enemy armoured vehicles has begun, after which the various episodes of the new drama are easily predictable. Stamani C. E. Iniziato El Investimento della Paisa da Parte dei Mezzi Corazzati Nemesi, dopo di Ivari Episodi del Nuovo Drama Sono Facilment Prevedibili. Grazini informed Mussolini that the 34 my 54 km long Tabruk perimeter was manned by only 22,000 men with 340 guns, a number wholly inadequate for the task. On 9 January, Razini informed the garrison commander, General Enrico Pitassi Manila, that there would be no attempt at relief. Razini ordered Tellera to fall back with the 60th Infantry Division Savretha, his last division, to a line between Derna and Berta, while directing the Babini Group Special Armored Brigade to Mechili. 
after being informed by Graziani that he was on his own, Manila had the bridge at Sidi Dod on the Bardia Road and the bridge at Wadi Ez Sahel on the Derna Road destroyed. Order of Battle Tabrak garrison details taken from Montanari 1990 unless specified. Roman 22 Corps Headquarters, 61st Infantry Division Cert, 69th Infantry Regiment, 3X Battalions, 1X Battery with 65-17 Mod, 13 Mountain Guns, 70th Infantry Regiment, 3X Battalions, 1X Battery with 65-17 Mod, 13 Mountain Guns, 43rd Artillery Regiment, 2X Groups with 75-27 Mod, 11 Field Guns, 1X Group with 100-17 Mod, 1914 howitzers, Alexei Machine Gun Battalion, Alexei Mixed Engineer Battalion, Alexei Replacements Battalion, 51st Persaglieri Motorcycle Company, 61st Anti Tank Company with 47 slash 32 mod, 1935 Anti Tank Guns, 61st Mortar Company with 81 mm mortars, 4th Tank Infantry Regiment. I medium tank battalion with 11 slash 39 tanks. LZI light tank battalion with L3 slash 35 tankets. 10th Army Corps Artillery Regiment. 22nd Army Corps Artillery Regiment. 25th Army Corps Artillery Regiment. 55th Division Artillery Regiment. Black Shirt Battalion Voluntari della Libya Libyan Volunteers. CXL Black Shirt Battalion. 22nd Bersaglieri Motorcycle Company, 25th Anti-Tank Company, 47-32 Mod, 1935 Anti-Tank Guns, 141st Mortar Company, with 81 mm mortars, 142nd Mortar Company, with 81 mm mortars, 55th Signal Company, Royal Italian Navy, San Giorgio Cruiser, Guardia alla Frontera, Infantry Kutvazdemin, Artillery 2X Groups, Service, Quartermasters and Supply Units, although Pitesi Manila had 32 L3-35 tankets and 39 M11-39 tanks, only seven of the latter were operational and in three weeks of attempts to repair the M11-39s, only three were serviceable enough to move in an engagement. After it had become obvious in the autumn of 1940 that the L3-35 was obsolete and the Milevin-39 badly designed and prone to break down, the Roman 21 Light Tank Battalion and part of the I Medium Tank Battalion had departed for Benghazi to be re-equipped with the new M13-40 tank. Katesi Manila had received no spares or fuel for the tanks and had the lightly armed and thinly armored L3-35 and the M11-39s buried in the sand as strong points. Fortifications Katasi Manila divided the defensive perimeter in two sectors, five subsectors and 16 strong points. Eastern Sector Brigadier Umberto Barbaris Subsector A from the sea to burn dunes to block the road from Bardia with four strong points Subsector B to block the road from El Adem with two strong points. The first line of the eastern sector was manned by the troops of the Guardia alla Frontiera, reinforced with four companies from the 69th Infantry Regiment. Expecting the main attack from this direction, Katasi Manila established a second line of defense to form My 4 6 came behind the strong points, based on a small hill at the junction of the El Adem and Bardia roads. At the second line under command of the 4th Tank Infantry Regiment, every available tank was dug in as a strong point. Between this position and the sea, the Roman 3 Battalion, 69th Regiment, dug in. Western Sector Brigadier Vincenzo Dalla Mura, Subsector A in the desert to the south of Tabrak, with four strong points. Subsector B to block the road from Akroma, with three strong points. Subsector C, to block the road from Derna with three strong points subsectors and B were defended by a battalion each from the 70th Infantry Regiment, while Black Shirt Battalion Voluntari della Libya Libyan Volunteers manned subsector C, 
behind the first line of defense were five strong points manned by the Roman three battalion, 70th Infantry. The commander of the 69th Infantry Regiment received the reserves Petassi Manila could muster, an understrength tank company with seven Malevin slash 39s, and two ad hoc formations, consisting of one Bersaglieri motorcycle company, one infantry company, one machine gun platoon, an anti-tank platoon, and an anti-aircraft section. In front of the strong points 11 my 18 km of anti-tank ditch was cleared out, 7,000 require mines and 16,000 pressure mines laid. To make up for the lack of anti-tank mines, Patassi Manila had 2,226 LB-12 kg bombs and 833 LB-15 kg bombs, left behind by the Rigia Aeronautica Royal Italian Air Force, buried upright in the desert, in the hope that a British tank passing over them would trigger the impact fuse. Artillery Patassi Manel organized the artillery into three groups, two for the eastern sector with 123 guns and one for the western sector with 97. Assuming correctly that the Commonwealth troops would attack from the south, Patassi Manila sent the Roman 2-43rd and Roman 3-55th groups with 75-27 mod. 11 field guns and the CV-25th and CXXX-25th groups with 149-13 mod. 14 heavy field howitzers and the 2nd battery of the Roman 15 group with 75-46 mod. 34 anti-aircraft guns used as anti-tank guns into that area. For long-range artillery fire, Patassi Manila relied on the cruiser San Giorgio in Tarbrook Harbor, which had two twin 254mm 10.0 in 45 guns and four twin 190mm 7.5 in slash. Two Rigia Marina Royal Italian Navy Shore batteries had twin 120mm 4.7 in slash 40 naval guns and two mobile 149 slash 35 heavy guns of the Guardia Alafron. With no air reconnaissance, Patassi Manila was unaware of the British artillery positions, and as most British artillery had a longer range than the Italian artillery, mostly of First World War vintage there, was little chance of effective counter-battery fire. Katassi Manila decided to employ every gun capable of direct fire as anti-tank artillery and managed to assemble 110 anti-tank guns, 32-37 mm guns in the buried Malevin slash 39s, 4347, 1935 anti-tank guns, 1365-17 mod, 13 mountain guns, 1175-27 mod, 11 field guns, 1077-28 mod, 5 field guns and 176-40 mod, 16 naval gun found in the naval stores, armor-piercing ammunition was available only for the 37mm and 47mm anti-tank guns. British Preparations Serations After surrounding Tobruk, the WDF had exhausted the ample Italian supplies captured at Capizzo and Solemn, O'Connor directed that the supplies flowing through the port of Solemn 350 long tons, 356 T per day in early January, and 500 long tons, 508 T daily late in the month to the Tay. Concerned mostly about not having enough fuel and supplies for the offensive after the fall of Tabruk, O'Connor delayed the attack to accumulate more supplies. As the 7th Armored Division had suffered more losses than the 6th Australian Division, O'Connor decided that the Australians would lead the attack. The two most depleted units, the 8th King's Royal Irish Hussars and the 6th Royal Tank Regiment, were withdrawn and their equipment distributed to the other four regiments of the Armored Brigades. The first wave of the attack was to be the 16th Australian Brigade and the 7th Royal Tank Regiment, followed by the 17th Australian Brigade and the 19th Australian Brigade. The 7th Armoured Division would attack along the western and perimeter to pin down the defenders. On 19 January, the Royal Air Force RAF dropped leaflets calling on the Italians to surrender, but Petassi Manila took no notice. Attack Night 20-21 January 
from midnight to 2.00 a.m. On 21 January, the Royal Navy monitor HMS Terror and three smaller ships bombarded Tobruk, while destroyers waited further out to attack San Giorgio if the crew tried to escape. For the rest of the night, RAF Wellington bombers attacked port installations, defensive positions, and drowned out the sound of the British tanks assembling for the attack. Morning At 5.40 a.m., the British artillery opened fire along the entire line, concentrating on an area about 2187 YD 2000 M by 766 875. Under cover of night, Australian sappers and the British artillery fire cleared a path through the thin Italian minefield in the area, and at first light, the 2 3rd Australian Battalion attacked. Within the hour, the Australians had created a breach one mile two km wide. At 7.00 a.m., 18 Matilda Roman II tanks passed through the breach, three of which veered left with the 2-3rd Australian Battalion, while another three veered right with the 2-1st Australian Battalion to expand the breach. At the same time, the rest of the Matildas advanced with the 2-2nd Australian Battalion towards Tarbrook. The first unit to be overrun by the 2-2nd was the CV-25th Artillery Group, which had no time to lay their guns for direct fire before they were overrun. The lack of radios of the Italian units proved to be a severe disadvantage. Telephone lines had been cut by the British aerial and artillery bombardment. Patassi Manila only received notice of the British attack at around 8.38.45 a.m. from a dispatch rider. By 9, 10 a.m., the Australian 2-2nd Battalion had reached Sidi Mahmud, and the 2-1st Battalion was at Sidi Dodd. The 17th Australian Brigade with the 2-6th Australian Battalion and 2-7th Australian Battalion had captured the Italian artillery positions between the two points. By 10.30 a.m., the Australians had overrun four of the Italian strongpoints and destroyed six of the ten artillery groups in the area. At 8.30 a.m., the 19th Australian Brigade, supported by a squadron of the 6th Australian Division Cavalry Regiment, had set off and towards the 4th Tank Infantry Regiment. The Australian Brigade was supported by 78 field guns, which moved in turns 219 YD 200 and forward every two minutes. The 19th Australian Brigade struck the Roman 3 Battalion, 69th Infantry Regiment, which was quickly overrun. A Bersagliere company and three Malevin 39 tanks that tried to plug the gap in the second line were defeated within minutes, the three Malevin 39s being knocked out. Air Power By 11.50 a.m., Petesi Manila had informed Grazini that the eastern sector had been destroyed and only isolated positions held out. All Graziani could do was to send three CR-30 fighters to Tobruk, which the RAF quickly shot down. Between 12.00 p.m. and 2.00 p.m., the 19th Australian Brigade attacked the position of the 4th Tank Infantry Regiment with such ferocity that 70% of the officers, including both battalion commanders, and 50% of the troops were killed in action. During the day, Blenheim's of 55 and 113 squadrons flew 56 sorties against Tobruk and the Gloucester Gladiators and Hawker Hurricanes of No. 3 Squadron Roth, No. 73 Squadron RAF and No. 274 Squadron RAF had patrolled to the west. Afternoon At 1.00 p.m., Katassi Manila ordered the mobile reserve with the seven operational Malevin 39s to attack the Australian left flank from behind an artillery barrage. Two Australian anti tank guns and two tanks destroyed five of the seven Malevin 39s, and when Australian infantry pushed forward, the mobile reserve surrendered. At 4 0 p.m., the 2-8 Australian Battalion attacked the Pilastrino position, while the 2-4 Australian Battalion had reached and surrounded the Italian headquarters at the abandoned Fort Solero. Petessi Manila and his staff retreated into the cellars, but by 6.30 p.m., 
Katasi Manila ordered his staff to surrender. At the same time, the 6th Divisional Cavalry Regiment had reached the outskirts of Tobruk, but then been stopped by fire from San Giorgio. Soldiers from the 2-4th Australian Battalion moved down the cliffs and used 3-inch mortars against San Giorgio. Having lost contact with forces outside of Tobruk, Admiral Massimiliano Viettina organized the defense of the harbor with the few men at his disposal. Grazini had denied his request to make a sacrificial attack on the Royal Navy ships outside the harbor, and Viettina began systematically to destroy the harbor and its stores. 22 January By nightfall half of the Tobruk fortified area had been captured, and at 4, 15 a.m. on 22 January, Viettina ordered Captain Stefano Puglis to blow up the magazines of San Giorgio. General Ivan Mackay ordered a general advance for the morning of 22 January. At 8.30 a.m., Viettina surrendered to General Horace Robertson of the 19th Australian Infantry Brigade, followed shortly afterwards by General Della Mura, who surrendered with the remnants of the Pilastrino position. At 4.00 p.m., the last strong point surrendered, and Tobruk had fallen. Aftermath Analysis Most of the demolitions had been of stores rather than installations. The inshore squadron of the Royal Navy began mine sweeping immediately and opened the port on 24 January. Casualties The Italians suffered more than 24,000 casualties, 18 officers and 750 soldiers had been killed, 30 officers and 2250 men had been wounded, and more than 20,000 men had become prisoners of war. The British captured 208 guns and 87 tanks. Roman 13 Corps, the new name of the WDF, suffered 400 casualties, 355 of them Australian. Subsequent operations by the surrender O'Connor's divisions had already pressed on, the 7th Armored Division reaching Mechely and fighting the action at Mechely on 24 January, while the 6th Australian Division had reached the Italian forward positions at Derna on the same day. Footnotes, 